Hi, my name is Chris Little, and I am the host of The Lifestyle Chase. In 2018, I started this show to have meaningful conversations. I've interviewed over a hundred different people, both in and out of the fitness industry. This podcast is something I'm incredibly proud of. Welcome to season four. Thanks for joining me. All right. So welcome back to the Lifestyle Chase. I have brought a guest to the show and I'm going to add some context to this because like a few years ago, our mutual friend Andrew Coates suggested to me that I should have Mike Howard on the Lifestyle Chase. And I waited way too long to make that happen. So I'm very happy that I did make it happen today. He's someone who has clearly listened to my show, which I am always appreciative of. Um, and he, he's given me feedback about it and it's made me feel really good. And so with that said, it is an honor to have you on the show. How are you doing today? Uh, thanks so much, Chris. I'm doing great. And, uh, yeah, no, thank, thanks, Andrew. <laughs> Andrew's a great guy. He's connected a lot of people and, you know, I've had the pleasure of being on his show and having met him, uh, uh, so yeah, that, that's awesome. It's great that, uh, our industry is that way where we can kind of meet people and interact and you sort of meet so many people through, through connections and through different, uh, colleagues, which is, which is awesome. Well, like the cool thing is that uh, Andrew literally just has to like walk across the gym and just be there at the same time that I am to make like these little industry insights and suggestions and stuff. And like, he's the reason why I went to the Kansas City Fitness Summit. I think I went the year that you might have missed out. I think I went 2019. I'm not sure if you were able to make it that year. No, you know, I haven't. It's funny because that came across my memories, I guess, a couple of weeks ago because it usually runs sort of early May, if I remember. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, it was eight years ago. I'm like, oh, my gosh, there is no way that eight years have passed since I've been at the Casey's Fitness Summit. So, yeah, I was kind of like a one hit wonder. I had only went gone once, not through any intentional act. It was just sort of life circumstances and whatever, you know, it just kind of like, you know, good intentions, but um, yeah, no, it was, it was definitely an amazing and I, you know, met lots of people through that and, and then uh, yeah, you know, it just kind of, yeah, just, just uh, kind of snowballs from there. Well, that's the absolute truth. Like sometimes it's just like you can do things several times and that can benefit you in big ways, but you can also do things mm. once and still <laughs> get a benefit from it. Um, yeah. And it's just like, we can take that into any frame uh, that could be someone placing value on their first workout as much as value mm. that they place on like their hundredth workout because mm-hmm. they can get to their hundredth without their first. Yes. Yeah. I was thinking about that and how that just relates to everything in life. Doesn't it? Right. <laughs> For sure. Um, looking at the branding on your shirt and being aware of lean minded, what was yeah. it that inspired lean minded in the first place? Yeah. So, I mean, I think I had transitioned a little bit, like I've sort of worn, I, I would say different hats within the industry, but also sort of within my own branding and coaching. And I, you know, I, I really started to pivot a little bit, I guess I want to say like seven or eight years ago, um, you know, having been in the industry almost 25 years, you know, I, I felt like I had sort of the, the biomechanic stuff down. I felt like, you know, I was learning a lot about nutrition, certainly don't know even the, the surface level of what, you know, what, what's out there, but I felt like I had a decent handle on it. But despite that, I felt like, okay, I think, I feel like there's still stumbling points from my client perspective. And so then I felt like I had to get inside the, the brains of my clients and, and really just sort of understand things from more of a mindset perspective, a, you know, behavioral economics perspective, and even a biological perspective. So thus began a very deep dive, very deep rabbit hole of uh, which I'm still sort of entrenched in. And I love it. I mean, I love, love learning about all this stuff, but I, I felt like I just sort of needed to rebrand in a sense. Um, so lean minded sort of came up in terms of something that, it, that encapsulates um being of a, of a healthy mindset as well. Um, it, it's sort of moving away from the X's and O's a little bit and more towards the side of, of, of our decision-making and, and how, you know, a, a powerful mindset can bolster everything else and how it starts with that starts with the habits 
starts with those mini actions. So yeah, I just kind of came up with the name. And to be honest, sometimes when you look for name searches now, it's just like, okay, what what uh, URLs are still available? Like what domain search names are still available? So, you know, that was part of it as well. So I decided that, uh, yeah, I would shift a little bit and sort of focus more on the, the mindset habit aspect of, um, you know, lifestyle change. For sure. I mean, like, when it comes to selecting names, I'm very familiar with that whole process. Like in the journey of creating the name, the lifestyle chase, I kind of decided what I wanted, like the vision of the show to be. I understood that I wasn't going to necessarily like back myself into the corner of just like exercise science or nutrition stuff like that. Cause I kind of felt that it was more on the lens of understanding people's why and just being able yeah. to kind of capitalize on the lessons people have learned over the years, mm-hmm. because like we often don't talk about the things that kind of stop us in our tracks because that's not glamorous. Mm-hmm. That's not what you tie to an award. You don't get recognition for being like, this is the three times I almost quit my job. <laughs> um, but I found that when people are more open about that, that is what keeps more people going on this journey, whether they be enthusiasts or professionals. Mm-hmm. Um, I can only imagine your 25 years time, you must have come across some times that may have like stopped you in your tracks, as we say. Um, can you think of any off the top of your head? Yeah, I mean, from a, from a just a meta standpoint, I mean, there's been, you know, it depends on how sort of, how, how, how deep you want to go with this. But I mean, I guess from a career standpoint, as well as sort of a life standpoint. Um, so were you thinking more of from like a, a professional standpoint of, of the coaching or from just a life standpoint? To be honest, like I think coaching is almost more service level and we can mm-hmm. overcome that with a lot more just uh, it doesn't seem as daunting. And what I've often mm-hmm. done with past guests is I'll kind of share some stuff about myself to kind of help frame the question. So for myself, like in my career path, oftentimes it's like feelings of isolation that lead Mm. me to think like, okay, like show's over, we're done. And Mm. I might have the metrics within the business that it could still be going, um, Mm -hmm. but it's the emotional, the social things that Mm. uh, stop me in my tracks. And Mm -hmm. these are the things I don't hear on other people's shows. These are the things that I have to look Mm -hmm. for and wide to find people talk about. So if we could go down that path, I think that would be what empowers people the most. Sure. Yeah. That makes complete sense. So yeah, no, absolutely. And I've had, I've had a, like a definitely quite a few moments of, I would say sort of either aha moments or those pivotal moments, those fork in the road moments where, you know, I, I, I could have been out of this industry at least, you know, half a dozen times and almost was at times. Right. And, you know, I say I've been in the industry 25 years. That doesn't mean I've been in it full time for 25 years. And I just took this path and all of a sudden I got successful and just kind of kept going with it. It's been a lot of ups and downs, um, you know, from sort of you know, life struggles to, you know, having, having the insecurities of, of putting myself out there and insecurities of, of the whole um, uh, just, yeah, uh, imposter syndrome, that sort of thing. So I, I, I was working sort of part-time um, trying to find my feet, trying to find my way. So I wore different hats and I, I was actually, you know, a, a part-time courier for a while. Uh, to pay the bills while I was trying to make a go of it. And I had these voices in my life saying, no, you should just kind of quit training. You know, you've given it a good shot, but you know, you got to go that stable path. And then I I talked to a mentor of mine. This was about, you know, 13 years ago or so. And he, I said, yeah, man, I don't know what to do. Like, and he's just like, quit. He's like, quit tomorrow, quit that job, quit the career job. I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, no, you you know, what you think is holding you back. Your safety net is actually, what is holding you back? That is the thing that's holding you back. What you think is, is keeping you afloat and what you think is, is providing that security, that's going to be your detriment. So he said, you know what, you, you, have, you already have the tools. You just have to make a go of it now. And, and, and that was a pivotal moment as well. And then you just get little insights here and there from like, you know, from clients and, and, and you just learn things along the way. And it, it's done this like it's dipped and it's it's gone up a little bit and there's definitely been highs and lows but i have not once even regretted you know that decision that brought me to where i am now despite the struggle right you know like i've got you know i've got two kids but i'm divorced you know what i mean so it's like there's there's that stress of life and then just like not know what i'm gonna do next or where i'm gonna go and then you know covid hits and so you know there's a lot of different life stuff and not 
nothing that's unique to me per se, but, you know, I think we all have our own journeys and I think there's always, you know, something that's going to, to, to throw wrenches at you. And I think you just got to kind of run with it. And I knew that this is what I wanted to do. This was not a job. It was a calling. And um, yeah, no, here I am. And I've worn sort of, like I said, various hats within the industry as a personal trainer and, you know, writer and, 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 um, you know, I, I run courses and now I, I do some retreats. So I, I, I thrive on being able to do different stuff within this uh, industry because it can be a very exciting industry in so many ways. Well, you answered that really well. And there's a lot that people can pull from that. And I'll kind of start us off. Like when you talk about how you spent time being a courier, one thing that I like to highlight with side hustles, cause like for full mm-hmm. disclosure, for anybody listening to this show, my entire time hosting this podcast, I've had side hustles and I've chosen rather than to hide that, than to just own that. Mm-hmm. Because like in a discussion with my dad, my dad was like, everything that you do, you found a way to monetize it. Like whether it be mm-hmm. something that feels like work or something that feels like fun, I just mm-hmm. put in enough reps that it became valuable and there's no shame in that because there's a lot of crossover between a lot of different skills, whether it be communication skills, transportation skills, uh, just so many things that can add value for us in a business standpoint, just in the sense that like you need a variety of skills to help mm. people. And the more skills that you acquire through job acquisition, the more unique you can be and the more ways that you can help that person in a genuine way. Because we're not working mm-hmm. with like people who were made out of cookie cutters. We're working with mm-hmm. people who have done those jobs, who have faced those struggles, who have had the adversity that's tested them to their limit. And we're learning to connect with them better than many more other people that they've talked to in the past. And that's kind of why they stick with us. So mm-hmm. anybody that's listening to a podcast might be going through a moment where they're having some like uh, introspection, some reflection, they're like, oh man, like, what am I going to do? And they might not have met a mentor, like the one that you're talking about. And mm-hmm. this could be their light at the end of the tunnel. But mm-hmm. on a segue, let's talk about that mentor. Do you feel like uh, you could give him a shout out or talk? Yeah, about absolutely. That? His name's Brian Grasso. So he's done some amazing things in the industry. Um, and I met Brian way back in, in college and uh, yeah, we just kind of we became friends and then sort of didn't communicate for a while. And then, of course, you know, the advent of social media, I find him, hey, man, you know, and I see what he's up to. And he's done all these great things in the industry from, you know, starting a, a, a youth fitness certification program. And he's the one that I sort of piggyback that mindset aspect to. Like he teaches a lot of courses on mindset and whatnot. And, you know, he's always been a sound solid voice in my life and he just is like full of wisdom but like just in the friendliest you know non-judgmental way right like it's always every time you talk to him you feel like you're getting a hug he's one of those guys right like you just kind (laughs) of so I've always kind of looked up to him and he's always had some some amazing insights and you you sort of listen to him talk and you're like yeah that made that makes a lot of sense and I wish I remembered a lot of that (laughs) you know what I mean like it's it's one of those things yeah what he said but yeah, no, you take little tidbits from it, but I'll never forget that conversation, which was kind of like, you know, spun things around uh, for me. And like I said, it wasn't, it wasn't like it was a, a, a completely linear switch. I mean, I, I definitely went through the stresses and, you know, of okay, am I going to make rent this month? Right. And that's not, you know, that's not just a way back when phenomenon, like it's, you know, that's recent too. So it's, it's like, but like I said, you know, I never look back and I never, uh, never, not even for a second thought, okay, I wish I didn't resign from that comfortable, stable position. And to your point, I mean, there's absolutely like, if you're listening to this, it, like there's no shame at all in having a side hustle. No, I think that's, that's, that's pretty, uh, not only calm and I think advisable, right? I think, you know, you have to do, and like you said, you get all these, you gather all this data and these skills and these uh, you know, just these learning experiences from different domains. And, and, you know, I think there's, there's so much value in that. Absolutely. And I mean, when it comes to all the different things that you do within your career, like writing being one of them, something that stands out to me is uh, you've done a lot of work where you've been able to listen to a lot of other people's podcasts. And that's part of what connected us where you actually mm-hmm. listened to my show and were able to kind of pick out things on that show what kind of sparked your interest in being someone who went through content just like just as something that interested you? What gravitated you towards mm-hmm. that? 
Yeah, I think I've always had this like intense curiosity of, of learning. And I, I just, and I think, you know, there's various forms. We're very lucky now in, in this day and age where there's, there's so many channels in which you can, you can accumulate knowledge, right? It's, I, and I never did well in a traditional academic setting where there was deadlines and there was a specific curriculum, but I love just learning these things at my own pace. And I found like I was doing a lot of commuting. So, you know, audiobooks and podcasts became my jam, right? So that was, that, that I think comprises probably about 90, 95% of what I consume. I still do read some things, but I, I, I do find that I'm just, you know, I mostly listen now. Um, so yeah, no, I, I felt like that was a good um, outlet to, to, to learn things from. And, you know, in, whether it's sort of, you know, the behavioral economic psychology or business, um, you know, it's, it's just, there's, there's so many realms that I felt I've, I've picked up so many different interests based on that. And, um, and I did for a time through, um, uh, through Jonathan Goodman's, uh, uh, personal Train Development Center. I was sort of a volunteer for picking the best podcasts of the week, right? So I think that's part partly how I came across yours, and and that was that was a great experience in that it sort of almost sort of forces you to listen to some of these on a on a bit of a deadline. So you're kind of like, okay, I can't just put it on a back burner. And it was good because it it gave me sort of that commitment device to to tune in and listen and, and learn. So, you know, I, I, I enjoyed that aspect of it and that was a great experience. So now it's just like, yeah, man, I, I'm in a car, I'm, I'm listening to something and, and, and a lot of different domains fascinate me. I still do listen to fitness podcasts, but I feel like I'm sort of expanding into more of the psychology and, and philosophy stuff. So it's, it's cool. Well, for sure. That definitely mirrors my own experience with like consent content consumption. Um, and like to add a layer to that, just basically anytime that I felt doubtful about myself um, with my presence as a trainer or the trajectory of my career, I basically just start to dive further into how I can become better, understanding that I have room to improve and like I'm not at the top, like I'm not, no matter how far along in my career I go, I'll always have something to learn. And there's always going to be someone who can teach me something that I don't know. And mm -hmm. so just the openness to that is what has helped me quite a bit. And just from like the nerves and from the, mm -hmm. uh, the imposter syndrome, mainly being able to continually tune into other people's perspectives. And like, mm -hmm. I definitely delve outside of the fitness space with my content consumption because mm -hmm. that's how I'm going to relate to the industries of some of my clients. And that's how I'm yeah. going to be able to communicate in ways that they feel heard and seen and not just like projected onto. Mm -hmm. um, but with that said, what is something that stood out to you content wise? And that could be in any arena that has kind of changed your frame of mind with things. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I feel like the, yeah, 2022 has been a, a stellar year so far from some of these groundbreaking books. So, you know, I, I'm learning from podcasts, but just recently I've read a few books that have been like really, really, really good. Um, and one's called Imaginable by uh, an author named Jane McGonigal. So she's both a futurist and a, a game designer. So her insights in terms of, so um, basically she, she creates... Um, simulations and it's such a fascinating look at, in terms of human behavior and, and 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 future forecasting so one of her things was like episodic future thinking right which is just this kind of a nerdy way to just say okay thinking about your future so imagine yourself getting up like five years and it's not just like okay what are you doing five years down the road it's like who are you waking up beside what are you eating for breakfast what does the world look like and by doing that it helps you in the present shape what you want that preferred future to look like. So I found that was like, I opened up some new possibilities. I had heard of episodic future thinking through the research that I'd done, but that just kind of opened a new door. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. So just trying to consume some of that. 
Um, the science of stuck is another one. So this is in the, the realm of sort of, you know, psychology and personal help and, and that sort of thing. So that's by an, uh, the author's named uh, Britt Frank. And, and that's kind of a, a, a good combination of science and, you know, a little bit of a slap upside the head in terms of like, you know, what your preconceived ideas are about like things like trauma. And, 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 and that's a fascinating dive as well. So all these things and all these domains, I feel another one is Get It Done by Ayelet Fishbach. So uh, Katie Milkman wrote one as well this past year called How to Change. So a lot of it is based on, on change science and, and behavioral science, neurobiology, that sort of thing that I'm nerding out on. But I think there's, yeah, it just opens things up to a wide variety of different ways to look at, at, at what I do. And all this to sort of, you know, I feel like you have a similar goal is to better help people. Like how can I become the best coach possible? And I feel like by delving into these other domains, I can, you know, gather these insights that will, will, what that will help others. Right. So I think that's, that's a really cool thing. And that's the ultimate end goal for me really. But when you look at these things, you kind of see that, you know, here's a full length mirror. Wow. This is stuff I'm not doing. Right. I'm like, okay, well, I, I, maybe it's time to look inside myself and, and, and see how, what, what changes I can make. Right. Because, you know, that's, <laughs> I, I, I'm not standing here on a pulpit. I'm, I'm coming from a place of, you know, okay, that vulnerability where, yeah, this is what I struggle with too. Yeah. I've been there or I am there. Absolutely. Like there's, there's a lot that you shared there that uh, I both relate to and value it, it, Like in terms of the book recommendations, those are ones that I'm going to pick out and listen to or check out like after this mm, episode, right. because nice. it's stuff that like I relate to recently. I, uh, I think it was on Amazon prime or something. There was a movie that was essentially based on like that, uh, the secret or whatever, like the, the law mm-hmm. of action. Mm-hmm. And it sounds a lot like that uh, episodic uh, thinking. Mm-hmm. And just in the sense that if you are able to kind of see what your future holds, then it's more likely that you're able to kind of facilitate the the action steps that are needed and to kind of have that self-awareness that your life will require in order to get yourself into those situations. And I found that to be like... Uh, I have so much belief in that mindset that I'm willing to like not have everybody agree with me on like that mm-hmm. whole, like, okay, this is my vision for myself. It's a little bit crazy, maybe unrealistic, but this is how it's going to be. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there. Like I'm willing to have the person be like, well, I don't think you can do that in that career. Or, I don't think you can mm-hmm. do it at that. Or I don't think you could do it at that age. And mm-hmm. I'm like, just the ruthless determination to move forward one step at a time, no matter what it takes. And I think the, the side piece of that is because of that attitude and that passion, we tend to bring in people to our lives that Mm. facilitate that to happen. Um, Mm. If we were to, let's say, identify a few catalysts in your life, people that, uh, have helped you hit the ground running in little moments, mm-hmm. whether they be big moments or little moments, who would those catalyst people be? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm very lucky that I have a, a very supportive family. So, you know, my mom and sisters, they've always been there and they always encourage me, even when I make, you know, dumbass decisions, they're kind of like, you know, they, they, they're, they're super non-judgmental and they're, they're very encouraging in that sense, you know, and, uh, you know, despite sort of some failed relationships, I, you know, I, I have an, a fantastic girlfriend right now and, you know, she's very supportive. Um, and I have to say like my clients and the, like, you know, I look at them as clients, but I've sort of come to see them more as like friends and family almost. And, and man, they you just, the wisdom that I've accrued from, from so many of them in different domains has been just like phenomenal. And, you know, um, I know it's my job to coach them, but I, in some cases, I feel like I'm getting just as much value in terms of spending time with them. Um, and, and, you know, like I, because I, like I see my kids on the weekend, so like I'm by myself, like, it, you know, my girlfriend sees her kid during the week. And so it's like, you know, I'm by myself most of the, the, the week, but so they, that's been an outlet for me too. So, you know, it is very much about like forming, creating, cultivating relationships uh, rather than like, okay, this is a strict coaching client relationship, right? Like it, it is in a sense, it, it, you're cultivating relationships. And and that's the reason why our clients come to see us, to be honest. They're not coming to me because I'm the very best trainer in the world. 
Um, you know, I, I, they're, they're coming to me because they feel comfortable coming to me. They feel like it, it's going to be a fulfilling hour. They're going to get a, a workout, but they're also going to, you know, it, it, it's going to be an experience. And, and that's what I continue to try to try to provide for them. And yeah, no, and, and they, they keep me fresh. They keep me from stagnating. Um, so yeah, I think there's, you know, I'm, I'm a very lucky guy in that sense, right. That I have very good support systems and, uh, yeah, probably don't tell them nearly enough and I should, but like, you know, that's, that's the truth of it. Well, it's cool what you spoke about with regards to how much a person can learn from their clients. Cause I feel the same way about like my clients, each and every one of them, no matter their age, their training history, anything about them, each one of them has taught me something, even if they just worked with me for one session, whether it was how I showed up as a trainer, um, the language that I used, how I showed up in my life, um, just which cues helped them, like just being open to those opportunities to learn fostered more growth, not only from a professional standpoint, but from a personal Mm -hmm. standpoint. And Mm -hmm. it also coincides with how much I value like connection within the industry Cause like earlier in this episode, we talked about how like there can be many, many moments where like our, our career goes up and down and up and down. Mm-hmm. But I'm kind of a believer in the sense that uh, when we are going up and down, like our colleagues aren't necessarily in sync with that up and down. So mm-hmm. it's an opportunity where we can kind of look for the helpers and then in turn be the helpers when that time mm-hmm. comes. And it's sort of just that, uh, that understanding that like, Nobody's in this thing alone. Nobody has to do it by themselves. You always got a pal to hop on a video call with or lean on, or as I've talked to many times in the past, just like the different friends and colleagues in the industry who Mm -hmm. helped me out with little things. And by having that mindset, it makes it less scary to bet on yourself Mm -hmm. because you have to be open to like, okay, there's a lot of opportunities here. And the only mm-hmm. thing missing is my belief in myself. Mm. So yeah. What, like what, what is your approach to kind of like getting into that space where you're like betting on yourself? Yeah, no, for sure. I think, you know, confidence accumulates just through action and through, through doing things and, and through not being afraid to make mistakes um, and not trying to take on too much at once. And I'm still learning the all of this. Um, But yeah, for sure. I think that definitely opens doors and it's not, again, like everything else, it's not a linear thing, but you're right. I mean, everybody's hitting different peaks at different times, different valleys. And yeah, you really see a lot of uh, the great that comes out of, of the industry in terms of, you know, the amount of support people are willing to give and I'm not great at asking for help. That's the thing. And I, you know, I, 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 but you know, yeah, though people have sort of, you know, stepped up and asked how I was doing during the pandemic, right. Just out of the blue, like, Hey, you know, are you okay? You good? You know, that sort of thing. And it just means so much. So that sort of sparked my impetus to do the same thing and just say, Hey man, how you doing? How you holding up? Hey, you know what I mean? And, and that's, uh, that's yeah. I think I think that's everything, and I think you know yeah. I've definitely seen some of the, the the best of of our industry kind of step up in that sense. Because thing is too, I mean you know like there's there are people that you we don't even think might be struggling are probably struggling too, and and um, yeah no you you really do see uh, that that yeah, how much of an impact impact it can make, and I think that can be a good s- stepping point to to building confidence, to building your own. Um, you know, that what you do does matter. Right? And I mean, when we think about the people who we assume probably aren't struggling, a lot of that correlates with like a uh, social media impact, like if sure. a big following, we'll kind of look at that and we'll be like, they're doing fine. And mm-hmm. something that I try my very best to remind myself to do is kind of invert that, like be like, okay, I see 50,000 followers. Let's imagine they had five and we're just looking mm. at their page and we're kind of thinking about them as a person, how they've showed up in our life. And we're thinking, hmm, I wonder how they're doing, like thinking about like their situation or any stressors that they may have or when it was all the the lockdowns and stuff, how like maybe based on their personal life, they might be totally isolated. Mm -hmm. And I found that uh, taking that frame of mind helps not only me to know who maybe I should check on, but also helps me to keep things in perspective for myself to understand, okay, like it's not like a 
everybody else is on the top shelf and we're on the bottom, like I'm on the bottom mm-hmm. shelf the thing. It's, it's more so everybody's on a shelf and mm-hmm. like we are more similar in this industry than we are different because we are yeah. all just independent human beings. We're just like uh, giant uh, walking meat packages, just trying <laughs> to cope with this world. Um, with that being said, has there been a time when like an uh, industry colleague has kind of checked on you that kind of stuck with you? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, like, yeah. And there's been a few and I, I will shout out to Jason Leonards cause, uh, you know, we both know him and, you know, anybody that knows Jason knows he's, he's just such a nice, genuine guy. And, um, yeah, I know. And, and so, it, yeah, I, I, he kind of reached out and said, how are you, you know, how are things going? And, you know, this is somebody that owns a brick and mortar gym, right. You know, like he would probably have more stress under the, 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 you know, the, the pandemic than, than most would in the industry. But I, you know, um, and yet, so for, for him to reach out that, that meant a lot. And I've had, you know, other, other colleagues as well, just say, Hey, how are you doing? And sometimes organically a, a conversation will just come up and then we'll just kind of, you know, I felt like a lot of what happens with the pandemic is when you start conversations, a lot of it is just commiserating, right? Just say, Hey, you know, like, how, how's this affecting you? You know, how are you doing with this? Um, and I feel like too, like we saw a lot of the good defaults of, of coaches come out and I think, you know, we just, uh, a lot of people just put their head down and just said, okay, what can I give in this moment? Um, you know, things are going to be rough for a bit. How can I provide? Right. Mm-hmm. And that just might be for, for our fellow clients or for people that follow us. And sometimes when you just see you're feeling like crap and you're down in the dump, sometimes it, it does help to be able to sort of give something, even if you don't have a lot of the, um, emotional resources in that moment. Um, just, it's just that little bit you do have. And I think people will, will remember that. And I, I think the industry just stepped up in a pretty good way in that sense. Absolutely. I mean, I'm definitely glad that you mentioned Jason Leonard's cause I'll always take any chance to uh, pump his tires that I can. Yeah. And for anybody that's listening to this, Jason's been on the show, I believe twice now. So you can kind of learn a little bit about his story. Cause I'm going to add some context to it because oftentimes we're going to be in these moments where it's like, we kind of feel like we can't build ourselves back up and we're like, okay, like we've hit like the, we've hit rock bottom and what are we going to do from here? And from what I've learned about Jason over the years, he is someone that uh, has found ways to build him back up, build himself back up. And he has written comeback stories for himself within his own world and space And so we have to kind of ask ourselves, like, uh, if, like for myself, if I look at a guy like Jason Leonard's and I'm like, I want to be like Jason when I grow up. And that's a true statement. I do want to be like him. He's Mm -hmm. a great guy. And the way to get there is you kind of have to pay to play. You kind of have to face those obstacles in your life where Mm -hmm. you kind of feel like, okay, how are we going to build our way up? And you have to kind of will yourself to be consistent through the things that work and show yourself some grace in the things that don't because we're all Mm. humans. So like the long and short of that is that if anybody is going through a moment where they're like, Holy crap, how am I going to write a comeback story for this? And they're just like in that doubt, they can know that it does get better. They can know that down the road, suddenly they're equipped with a, a special kind of bandwidth that allows them to check in with people in a whole different country um, that gives them the capacity. Like Jason's helped me out in all kinds of cool ways. He, like he sends a bunch of us shirts with our name on the back. Yeah. Like, that is so special. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah. But it's just, we, we grow through what we go through, which I know sounds cliche for some people, but it's just, it's absolutely so true. And so often when we talk to people who face like shitty, shitty times, um, and then we ask, well, would you go back in the time machine and just erase that? Even if it brought them a lot of pain, they don't erase it, which mm-hmm. is so profound. Um, mm-hmm. so with that being said, it's just, it's, it's just life is interesting in which it, uh, has us pay a price for admission mm-hmm. and in which it forces us to lean on one another and connect with one another and be real. Um, mm-hmm. but in being open about that people who haven't heard that from someone might understand that the struggle that they're going through 
um, is shaping for a much better, brighter future for them, even though it won't always be easy. It gets better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And I mean, I went through that long tangent, but something that I wanted to bring up as we're going through our conversation today is you talked about the retreats. Retreats mm-hmm. are something I like. I like the sound of that. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to know what kind of inspired that to start. What, uh, what made you start up with that kind of stuff? Yeah. So, I mean, I guess we're, we're probably going to go back like six or seven years now. And I was, you know, working with a client and, you know, we became friends and she had recently gotten her yoga instructor certification. And she's like, you know what we should do? We should, we should take a bunch of people to like Costa Rica and you do the fitness stuff. And I do the yoga stuff. I said, ah, that sounds really good. And I did like, you know, what most people do and just sit on it for like four years, didn't do a single thing. And then finally I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to do it. Um, because as we talked about before, all those insecurities crept up. Oh, could I really do this? Oh, I'm afraid. Oh, what if it doesn't work? You know, like you, you go through that whole process of, of talking yourself out of it. So I think I finally just said, okay, I'm going to bite the bullet, do it, get a few people together. And it did. And, and it was fantastic. I mean, you know, like, it, it, you know, it, there were people that I knew that were clients. Um, there were a couple that I didn't know that I became really good friends with. And it was just, it was, it was magic. It was, um, I think it's a, a fantastic way to just sort of get a bunch of cool people together. You have a health like, so the, I, I called it a flexible health retreat. That was kind of the catchphrase for it, which meant, you know, okay, it's healthy, but you know, people where there's a happy hour and, you know, <laughs> there's, you know, it's not, we're not drinking kale smoothies three times a week and, you know, meditating for seven hours a day. Like it, you know, there's an exercise component. We're trying to eat relatively healthy, but it's basically just a bunch of cool people getting together in this absolutely beautiful spot uh, where we can kind of connect and just, you know, have really, really sort of experiential, um, growth experiences together. Um, so I have sort of, a, a like a, uh, there's an exercise component and I hire a yoga instructor to do a, a, a session in the afternoon. And then there's what I call like deep dive talk. So we talk about things like mindset or, or, you know, how to age healthfully. And we do talks at night and, you know, and then during the day, we just hang out at the beach and we go on adventures, we surf and whatnot. So um, yeah, I've, I've sort of tried to turn that into an annual thing. Of course, the last two years got derailed, but I'm hoping to get back at it. So I'm going to do one in Costa Rica come uh, February of uh, 2023. And then I'm going to try to do at least one more in 2023. But the eventual goal is to do three or four every year, just in various destinations. So I'm, I'm going to try to turn it into more of a, of a, I don't want to say a main focus, but a co-focus of what I do. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's important to highlight that kind of stuff because like not a lot of people know, but travel is part of the reason that inspired me to take risks on myself. Like I might've just had like a stereotypical nine to five still to this day, if not for the trips that I took traveling and it's like a multifaceted thing. So part of it was the fact that it taught me that you can recover from big daunting investments, even if they have you like um, being very broke for a while, because a lot of these trips, yeah. they cost like two or $3,000 or something, even if you're super frugal. Like my trips to Hawaii, I've camped on the beach and like, it was still expensive. Um, But uh, like you learn so much from being in that new environment, you, you get to uh, see things with a new fresh perspective and you can kind of put yourself in environments that you can also transpose to different situations. The one Mm -hmm. example being, um, Somewhere in the time that I was just starting to do like part-time gigs within the fitness industry, but was still in my, my full-time role outside of the fitness industry. I went to Costa Rica with a friend of mine and we did some Mm -hmm. backpacking and I am like scared of heights. Like I mostly scared of just the thought of dying. If I fall, not scared of like elevation, I can be in a skyscraper at the window, but I can't be like at the edge of a mountain and like see the rocks crumble down. That just like makes me freeze. (laughs) And so my, my friend knowing full well, what I wanted to do with my life that I wanted to change careers, that I wanted to be in the fitness industry, that I wanted to inspire others. He kind of gave me a push to try bungee jumping. And wow. bungee jumping was completely out of character for me, like very off brand. I'd be like the chicken in all scenarios, but I was like, you know, I'm going to have to do this. Cause I'm going to have to have a lot more courage in my life. If I want it to unfold the way that I want it to. Mm. 
And just like that act of physically willing myself to do something that had a risk to it, but it wasn't mm-hmm. so risky that I was going to just inevitably die. It was just mm. something that just makes you nervous and scared and freeze up and makes of course, you yeah. Having gone through that gave me the courage to make the moves that I had to make and take the risks that I had to take to start my career. But with that story out of the way, having shared with you how travel has helped me, have you mm. ever had any epiphanies in any of your travels over your lifetime? Yeah. I mean, I would say, well, there's, yeah, I think there's, there's been a few, like I haven't traveled extensively um, aside from the, the retreats I did in, in Costa Rica. Um, I, I have been to India, which was a fantastic trip. And I also did, did a trip to Thailand. And I guess it was an epiphany in a sense, because it was a situation where I was supposed to go with a significant other and uh, we had broken up and, so it was just like, I'm like, oh, am I going to go? I can't get a refund. I guess I'm going to go. I'm in every airport and they keep calling her name and I have to go up to the desk. And go, yeah, no, she's not coming. I'm by myself like a big loser. But <laughs> um, so I think that was a, a, a transformational trip in a sense, because it was one of those things where it was like, OK, I, I, I'm following my own path. Like I could kind of wake up when I want. If I want to do something, I want to climb that mountain. I just I can I can just do it. Like if I go along on a, on a moped, I rented a moped, I can just take a, I can just take a detour here and go up on that cliff and just not, you know, um, I mean, sure. It'd be nice to sort of be at the top of that and to be able to turn to somebody and say, isn't that beautiful? And that's what I want eventually, you know, but, but at the same time it was freeing because I've always done something with somebody else. Right. I was never that type of person to go off and, and, and travel on my own. Um, and this time I was sort of forced into it and I was kind of like, okay, you know what? I can sort of do this on my own and I can be fulfilled on my own. And, you know, if, and when I meet somebody that's awesome, but I don't need that other, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? I, um, so I think that was kind of one of those moments. And then also, yeah, I think I've had a few in Costa Rica and just, really that reemphasize the the idea of connection because you get a chance to really get to know people when you're with them most of the day. You know what I mean? It's, it's not just like, okay, I see them for an hour. I see somebody, you see a friend for an hour. Like you really just find out who people are and, and, and it, 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 it really sort of opens, opens the doors for sort of a deeper connection. Um, and then, yeah, had a, an unexpected pivotal moment, which is a bit scary in the last uh, trip to Costa Rica. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it real quick, but you know, we were in a, it's on this beautiful stretch of beach, but it's quite isolated. Um, and you know, it, it gets quite wavy. So I was out there and, um, there's a couple there's one woman who was there and she, you know, poor, poor lady, she's this amazing person. I love her. And she was afraid to go in the water all week. And then finally had the courage to go in the water and these are pretty big waves. So she's there. And my uncle also came on the retreat is there. And, um, you know, it, the waves started getting all of a sudden, like, she's like, oh my God, guys, I can't touch the ground. And I'm like, oh shoot, I can't touch the ground either. So it was a moment of panic and nobody else was on the beach. I saw the last person from our crew sort of walking towards. So I yelled out, I'm like, Hey, you know, we're, and she couldn't hear me. So in that moment, we're like, Oh, you know, so like we both grabbed her hand, we're swimming like crazy to the shore we're going further back, you know, the waves are coming, I'm, you know, I'm swallowing salt water. I'm not a strong swimmer. Uh, thankfully my uncle is a stronger swimmer than both of us, but we just, we just kept pushing and like, it was just like, you know, I'm getting exhausted at this point and, you know, you, she's panicking and uh, yeah. So if it, I don't know what, you know, like hand of God, whatever it was, we got, we got to, to, to ground where we could, we could, and, you know, I, I just like, I, it was a, it was a near death experience and I don't want to over dramatize it. I mean, but I, I do feel like I, I had about 90 seconds left in me and then I was going under and there, you know, the million thoughts are going through my head. So that was an inadvertent, not like an epiphany moment. It was kind of forced, <laughs> but it's like, okay, I feel like I'm, 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 still meant to be on this earth um, for whatever reason. And it just kind of shifted me to like, okay, now what it, it sort of strengthened a resolve and a purpose within me that, okay, you know, I, I think there's, there's, there's something that I can do in this world to sort of help people. And obviously, you know, I'm, 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 yeah, I wasn't meant to die today. <laughs> so it was, it was one of those moments where it was a scary as hell, but 
you know, I, it definitely, it jolted me in, 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 in some way. Right. And it just happened to be sort of a, on this retreat. And, you know, we, it, it, we all had a kind of a laugh about it afterwards, but it was like, holy crap. Like we just about died out there. <laughs> so, well, yeah. You, you left a few wisdom nuggets there that'll kind of like unpack for the listeners who may not have caught it, but it really just, uh, shone out to me as I was listening to you talk about solo travel, because that's been mm-hmm. basically my existence for the last like five or so years. It's just, I do, if I do something, I'm doing it by myself. And at mm-hmm. first it was something that I took as like, Oh, I'm doing it by myself. <laughs> and then over time with how much benefit I gained from like, just pushing myself to do things solo, I started to realize it's kind of like, uh, I reference this song often. It's like the, eight mile by Eminem, just like the movie, the mm. track where he's mm-hmm. like just unloading all of his weaknesses so that the other guy doesn't have anything to, uh, yeah. to get him with. Yeah. I take that approach when it comes to just showing up in life, just our, our essence. Like if we are mm. able to show up as fully as we are, and if we're able to experience as much as we can within that day, um, like, what can somebody do to take that away from us? Cause we took it ourselves mm-hmm. and we get to experience those moments and we get to benefit from those experiences. Um, so many of my biggest ideas have come on like solo road trips where I go to the mountains and I just mm-hmm. reflect and I think, and I go on a long walk and I wouldn't have had that moment if I had a companion. And mm-hmm. so if people are listening, I hope that they feel encouraged and supported to go on a solo trip, even if, you've been in like a 20 year relationship, even if you just started dating someone you're really excited about prioritize a a solo trip because it's very, uh, is moving. It helps you with your career, helps you with your personal life, helps you with your communication skills because you start to get introspective and more self-aware to the degree where you start to realize like how you may have been putting something out into the world might not have been how the world saw it. Mm. And you get to reframe situations. And then yeah, the that's second, fantastic. Yeah. The the second piece that I wanted to get in because it was just like as we're bringing this episode to a close this one is one that I think is underrated when it comes to life in general. And you're talking about that near death experience. Mm-hmm. And I can relate to that. I I too have had a near death experience. Mm. And it's just it rattles you in such a way that all of a sudden things that we think that we have time for or things Mm. that we think we don't deserve, we kind of change that a little bit where you're like, okay, I have to place a certain sense of urgency to this because time is finite. We don't just get refunded. And then just like you start to just own things that matter to you. Like we start to own how we show up as a trainer or a coach. Like Mm -hmm. this is just who we are. Nobody can take that away. No side hustle is going to dilute that. No mm-hmm. side venture is going to make us less than, and it's simply because we only get this one shot, uh, mom spaghetti. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. It's just, uh, there, there's so much value to going out and experiencing life and embracing the things that really do give us a bit of a uh, flash of perspective. And I'm glad to hear mm. that you survived that because it would be a shame to not have been able to have this, this podcast episode. Yeah. yeah, no, I knew I had to be on the podcast. I'm like, no, no, Christian, Crystal hasn't invited me on the podcast. I got to make it back. <laughs> I got to survive this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely, man. And and I think even if it's just a small scale, like even the small, like the, the short amount of times where I just go for a walk, there's just so much value in going for a walk and being with your own thoughts or a hike. Right. And I think we, our society suffers from, you know, what I think it's Cal Newport that said it like a deprivation of solitude um, or because we live in a very noisy world. And, and it, there's very few opportunities and chances that we sort of carve out. And I do emphasize the word carve out because they don't tend to happen organically. We have to make them happen um, where we just get to be. We just get to be with our thoughts. Right. And, and that is often when a lot of clarity comes. That's often when I get some great ideas uh, or I, I have a breakthrough with my writing, you know, so I, I or, or some sort of life epiphany or, or what have you, nothing that dramatic, but you know what I mean? It's, it, it sort of, it gives you clarity. 
Absolutely. And the way that you said carved out, like what I would say for our listeners is how to action that into place. Start booking yourself for you mm-hmm. appointments. Like for myself on my Google calendar, um, I'll just put out like a block of an hour and a half and that's for my long ass walk. That's when I'm going walking. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And it takes me such amount of time to get to the location and such amount of time to get back. And the distance is going to be this amount. And then it's blocked out and it's going to happen. And like, sometimes if I have a hard time actually following through, I'll just tell somebody else that I'm going to go for a walk. And then they mm. either join me on the said walk or they uh, poke me and be like, Hey, how was your walk? And I'm like, Oh shit. Uh, yeah. Back. So yeah. Like looping other people into your journey and your process is helpful and staying connected is just so moving in what can happen with it. Um, mm. With most of my episodes as of late, I have the guest give the audience a challenge for the day. So now it is mm. your turn to give that challenge. All right. I like it. And I'm going to, you know what? I'll just kind of logically leapfrog on what you just said, like create that time and, and go for a walk. Give you, give yourself a uh, you date and just get out there and do it. And it can be that simple. I think we just, you know, I get it. The whole thing with social media and I was walking is underrated at almost to a point where it's becoming overrated, but it's like, no, like th- that, that is good. Like that, that is useful. Um, it, you know, psychologically, emotionally, physically, uh, it, it's, it's, it's definitely, I think that's, uh, I think that's the, you know, number one, I think, you know, I always tell people you're never more than, you know, five minutes away from being able to turn your health around. That's that first step. And you take that first step, both sort of proverbially and physically, um, and then just keep taking those steps. Absolutely. And I mean, that's, that's a challenge that I'm probably going to take on in a few hours here where I'm going to think about our conversation and see what I can gain from it and check out those book recommendations, which I hope everybody else does as well. But with that said, thank you for so much for being on the show today. Oh, Chris, this was awesome. Thank you. I appreciate the conversation and your time.